In the last stream, we were working on setting up this behemoth of an extreme reactor, which is now capable of producing well in excess of 12 million redstone flux per tick. Uh, between streams, it has filled up, so it's now 99.99% full on fuel. The reason that it's not 100% full is that there is some waste inside of the reactor because last time we set up the input port and we put down an exporter to export all of our uranium into the reactor you'll see that we're now back up at 9000 uranium so the reactor has filled up and we've managed to uh, to start banking up a little bit on the uranium as well but we didn't set up the input port here or the output port for the reactor and so there is a little bit of cyanide in here which is the waste in the uh, the fuel bar there so if we quickly grab an importer and some cable and do something like this and like i was gonna put it here but i'm gonna do this just so that we can still access the controller easily that should pull all of the cyanide in and should hopefully allow the uh, the fuel there to go up to a hundred percent speaking of the cyanide i have added a few more drawers between streams and i'm gonna go ahead and uh, quickly see you can't craft cyanide nuggets that's fine let's just drop the cyanide in like so and as per usual, let's get the void and tier five storage upgrades into there just to make sure that our system doesn't get clogged up with cyanide at any point in the future. So we have our reactor. We have the ability to produce a massive amount of redstone flux per tick. Now the plan for today's stream is going to be to see if we can't use that power to finish the pack. So the end goal is to craft these antimatter cores. These are a bit of a pain to craft. They've got a lot of, of crafting involved in them, but the core ingredient that we're currently missing that we need is antimatter. Antimatter is made by crystallizing the liquid antimatter, and liquid antimatter you get using a supercritical phase shifter. This is a giant multi block structure from a mechanism that turns polonium into antimatter. It turns a thousand millibuckets of polonium into one millibucket of antimatter, and it uses 400 million redstone flux per tick so that's the maximum it can use i believe per supercharged coil obviously we're not producing 400 million fe per tick that doesn't mean it won't work it just means that it's going to go slower than it would if we had 400 million fe per tick so we'll see how it goes we do need 50 millibuckets of antimatter per antimatter pellet and we're going to need quite a few antimatter pellets and so although we are producing a staggering amount of redstone flux 12 million plus i haven't actually tested it since we filled up the uh, the fuel here but uh, if we turn it on we should be producing in excess of 12 million redstone flux per tick if we wanted to we could go through and add some coolant to this i mentioned it a little bit in the last stream we could add something uh, like diamond blocks or netherite blocks or um resident ender stuff like that to potentially try and cool down the reactor and squeeze out even more power we might be able to get it closer to uh, 15, maybe 20 million redstone flux per tick, but we'll set up the supercritical phase shifter and we'll see how fast it is. And then we can assess from there whether or not we need to generate more power to make it faster. Before we get into any of that though, we do need to head back to the creative matter quest line. So last episode, we set up a, a very janky system over here for sifting these creative organic spores. Since the end of the live stream, the server has been chugging along and we now have a full iron chest of creative organic spores. And we should also have a fair amount of creative essence and creative essence. Different types of creative essence, but we should have a fair amount of both of those. We've got 405 regular creative essence. And if we head on through into our compact machine, we should have a little bit of the other creative essence now somebody in the youtube comments did point out that i made a bit of a mistake here in that this drawer still has a storage downgrade in it because we used it for um for holding stone pebbles you'll see that we were holding about 600 or 700 even uh, creative essence in the creative pot there which has since just uh, flown out of it so um we do have a fair bit of it i'm not quite sure how much we're gonna need for now i'll just take everything that's here and we'll dump it into the uh, the system and we'll see how many of these uh, creative organic matters we can craft. I think the answer is going to be quite a few. So I've made four stacks of organic matter here. We do have what it takes to make even more of this if we need it. But we start sifting it and uh, we've got almost a stack here. So uh, hopefully that's just going to keep going and keep getting us even more creative waste. Uh, we can make a fair bit more of it should we need to. But uh, again, I'm not too sure just yet how much of that 
we're actually going to need. For now though, we can take that creative waste and process it into nuclear waste using the chemical oxidizer. This guy is made with four atomic alloys, two creative waste, one basic chemical tank, one regular old chest, and a dynamic tank. That looks fairly straightforward. Do we have any atomic alloys left from the last stream? We do not. However, we do have four in here. Fantastic. And we have a ton more of these reinforced alloys, and I assume probably also, yeah, a fair bit more obsidian dust. So if we wanted to, we could also try and get some more of those atomic alloys uh, if we need them, which I'm fairly certain we will, because I think the super critical phase shifter uses them quite liberally. For now, though, we just need some structural glass, which is made with four uh, waterproof ingots. We made these real early on in the pack. They are Inval Constantin alloys and aluminum ingots. That is fine. We can then craft up a dynamic tank. And then from there, we're just missing a regular gas tank. That's four osmium, four redstone, and boom, there is our chemical oxidizer. And there is the creative matter quest line complete. Nice. So let's do a few things here. Let's grab another flux plug and let's grab another flux point. The flux plug is going to go onto the reactor here to allow us to start tapping in to this 12 million redstone flux per tick that we're generating. And then we're going to need, I think, quite a few flux points today to provide power to a lot of the mechanism machines that we're going to be working with. Speaking of which, the mechanism machines can be sped up quite a bit with the time in a bottle. However, we don't have a ton of time left in our time in a bottle. We've got an hour and a half here, which is a fair amount, but I feel like we're going to need a lot of time if we don't invest in speed upgrades. Thankfully, Mechanism has both speed and energy upgrades. Those are these ones here, speed, and if we type in energy upgrade, these ones as well. Uh, the speed upgrades increase the amount of power used, but also increase the speed at which the machine runs. The energy upgrades offset that increase in power. So they make the machine more efficient and kind of reduce the energy usage as you increase the uh, energy usage with, with speed, if that makes sense. So uh, to make these, it's not too difficult. We need glass, we need infused alloys, and we need osmium dust. We'll encode the recipe and then teach our system to make osmium dust with a crusher, I guess, but we actually don't have a crusher, which is gonna prove difficult. Gold dust, on the other hand, we can teach, I think, using the pulverizer. We totally can, yeah, we can encode this recipe right here. Unfortunately, Osmium does not have the same recipe, and so if we want to teach that, we are going to have to get a, a crusher. That shouldn't be very difficult, I don't think. The uh, crusher from Mechanism is a fairly simple recipe, does require another steel casing, and it does require two buckets of lava, but as per usual, we've got a ton of lava lying around, so that's not going to be a problem whatsoever. Boom, there is our crusher. And for now, we can just go ahead and place that down somewhere along the line here. Let's put it down right there. And then let's get a crafter on top of it. And then we'll also do... Actually, this should be fine because I'm fairly certain the mechanism machine here can auto-eject to the chest here. So if we just set the backside to blue, which is output, and we want to make sure the top is set to input, the rest here can be set to none. And then we can turn auto eject on by clicking this button in the top right. And now any item that ends up in the output slot will get automatically pushed back into that iron chest. The uh, final piece of the puzzle here is to get some energy pipe down to make sure that is connected up. So we'll do that like so. And do we have that crafter? Once we have the crafter down, we can then just go ahead and drop in a pattern for osmium dust. Encode. And we'll drop that in like so. So now if we request some osmium dust, actually we can request the uh, speed and energy upgrades, right? I'm going to request a stack of each of these, which is quite a lot and actually apparently is too much because we don't have enough infused alloys. That's fine. We can put those in here. Can I request eight speed upgrades? I can. So eight upgrades is the maximum number of upgrades that you can put in of either variety. You'll hear in the corner here that this uh, crusher does make quite the racket. I will go to the muffler, type in Crusher, and just turn that down ever so slightly. Not going to fully get rid of the sound, but, you know, make it so it's not just clanking away in our eardrums for the entirety of the stream. Once we have the eight speed upgrades, we can place those directly into the Metallurgic Infuser. Uh, you can do this by either shift-right-clicking on the machine, or you can click this little upgrade button and then place them in uh, up here, and that will just install them 
into the metallurgic infuser as well you'll see right now that it is faster but it's using 2000 redstone flux per tick which is substantially more than it was using previously however if we take these eight energy upgrades and throw those in as well it's now down to 200 redstone flux per tick so it's an order of magnitude less power being used once you add in those uh, those energy upgrades which is very nice indeed we can then take those out we can do the same thing again here we can request eight more speed and eight more energy and then we can put those into the crusher and then once we have them in the crusher that's going to allow us to make the speed and energy upgrades faster in the future from there we can then go ahead and make some for the chemical oxidizer and at that point we should be able to start making some nuclear waste fairly quickly from there we then need to get a couple of machines like this uh, isotopic centrifuge. This is going to allow us to uh, turn that nuclear waste into a plutonium, which we need to make plutonium pellets, which are required for the SPS casing. We also need a solar neutron activator to produce polonium pellets, also to make the SPS casing. So quite a few items required here. Once again, let's give that a quick bit of acceleration just to make it that tiny bit faster. Uh, again, putting the energy upgrades in when you don't have any speed upgrades in doesn't change anything. So these on their own don't do anything. They only offset the power increase from speed upgrades, if that makes sense. So uh, let's see. Can we request for the third time now eight speed and eight energy upgrades? We can. And you'll see that, that was so much faster. Do we have the speed upgrades? We do. Do we have the energy upgrades? We do. Look at that. You'll love to see it. So... We'll take the chemical oxidizer. This machine, I think, is going to use maybe a fair bit more power. During that time, I think our system should have managed to get the flux point and the flux plug. It did indeed. We'll drop the flux plug onto our reactor active forge energy power tap reinforced, which is quite the name, and we'll make sure that is set to our network. And then from there, we'll also start throwing down our mechanism machine. So let's put you down maybe here for now, and let's give this guy some power we'll set that to our network and we'll also fill this with energy and speed upgrades so that is going to produce nuclear waste now we do have to be careful because if the nuclear waste gets into the world the world will become infected with radiation and we will just start to die over and over and over again which is not ideal so you do need to be very careful around everything that's radioactive uh you'll know it's radioactive if it has a radioactivity number this one here has 10 of the uh, of the radioactivity units of measure and i believe the uh Polonium and plutonium also are, are radioactive as well. But uh, let's see here. We'll bookmark the centrifuge and we'll bookmark the neutron activator as well. These both look fairly straightforward. However, we are going to need more ultimate control circuits, which of course means more atomic alloys. That is fine. It turns out we don't necessarily need to worry too much about the radiation because Ben has just told me that there is actually a radiation cleanup item available in the shop. So if you do accidentally leak some radioactive waste into the world, you can go ahead and just purchase this for 32 uh, B-Bucks and that should get rid of all of that extra radioactive waste there, which is uh, very nice indeed. Quick detour as well. The Twitch chat wants me to make these free runners. These apparently are going to uh, reduce the amount of fall damage that I take. So if I make these, I don't know how expensive the reinforced variants are. They're actually not too bad. You know what? We can make some diamond dust. We can make that happen. So we can wear these on our feet. They're going to start charging instantly. And I believe now that when we drop from the jetpack... Oh, look at that. We no longer take the fall damage that we previously took. That is fantastic. Anyway, now that we have those uh, boots and we no longer have to worry about uh, dying from fall damage, let's see about uh, getting some more of these atomic alloys. So we are going to need some more enriched diamond. That's fine. We'll drop you in there and then we'll use that to process some more refined obsidian dust. Even though this is already faster than it once was, we can make it yet faster still. I do want to be a bit more conservative with my use of this time in a bottle today because yesterday we were quite aggressive with it and managed to burn through like four or five hours in uh, in a very short period of time which is not ideal but uh, here we go this is a ton of atomic alloy fantastic let's use that to make the ultimate control circuits now i'm going to go ahead and just teach our system how to make these because it's a bit of a pain to craft these especially when we have all of the items required just having to go through the rigmarole of turning uh, basic control circuits into advanced, advanced into elite, and then elite into ultimate. It's going to be a lot easier if we can just drop the items in the system and then request those. So can I drop you in? Do I have a few circuits? I do. So can I get, I think, four? Yeah, four ultimate control circuits. I can. 
and hopefully very quickly. Fantastic. From there, we can make our solar neutron activator just as soon as we steal one of the creative wastes from our iron chest. Boom. And then the isotopic centrifuge is just missing a basic chemical tank. That is not going to be a problem. And boom. Cool. So these also require power. And uh, I think we'll put these down somewhere over here. I'm going to request like 10 more flux plugs here. We're missing dimensional shards. Eh? Interesting. We might need to look at making a few more of those. In that case, can I get like five more? I can. So what we'll do here is we'll place down both of these machines. We'll have the... Ooh, how do I want to do this? We'll put you here and we'll put you here. Both of these require nuclear waste. So we are going to need some pressurized tubing from mechanism. I believe this is basically the only um, pipe that can move the gas here. You can put the machines right next to each other. That would also work. But I think that for now, we can take some of the ultimate pressurized tubing. And if we do something like this, that's going to pull the uh, nuclear waste out of there and into here. So you'll see that the uh, solar neutron activator is extremely fast. It's made 10,000 millibuckets of polonium incredibly quickly. Over here, the isotopic centrifuge is uh, powerless. Uh, the reason it has some power in, by the way, is because it was wirelessly charging in my inventory. But uh, that's where these extra flux points come in. So let's do something like that and make sure this guy's getting the power that he needs. And uh, yeah, this one doesn't require power. It's solar powered, which is very nice indeed. Um, the sound on this is, again, horrible. Um, I think that it is the isotopic centrifuge that is making all of the noise. So isotopic, let's, um, there we go. That's so much nicer. Turn that right down and then uh, get a bunch of speed and energy upgrades to allow us to make this, hopefully, a fair bit faster. So by default, this is already using 80 redstone flux per tick. If we add in eight speed upgrades, it goes up to 32,000 redstone flux per tick, which is a fairly large amount. Nothing that we can't handle, though. We should have way more than that. Um, I am going to click a disable limit here. The limit is 800,000, so that's not a problem just yet. We can add the energy upgrades here. That's going to bring it right down to a sum amount. It's actually filled up, so I'm not quite sure how much it, uh, it was using. But now we need to take both the uh, plutonium and polonium and run those through a pressurized reaction chamber. So we could do with two of these uh, PRCs, one for the polonium and one for the plutonium. This requires an enrichment chamber. That's fantastic. It's easy enough. And then we need two more gas tanks. This is actually uh, very cheap. We'll get four gas tanks because I would like to make two of these actually if we can. So uh, this is done. Let's request another steel casing so we can get another enrichment chamber. And then we'll drop both those in the system. And that should be two pressurized uh, reaction chambers. We're just missing one more dynamic tank. And so here what we'll do is we'll put the pressurized reaction chambers, I think, just directly in front of their respective machines. And I think both of these recipes just require water as well. So in that case, I think it's time to get another sink from cooking for blockheads. That is just going to require one bucket of water, thankfully. We are at sea, and so buckets of water are uh, all around us. So boom, and boom, let's get you down over here. We'll put this, I guess, right about, you know, we'll put it right here, and then we'll grab some fluid pipes, along with, of course, our trusty ultimate pipe upgrades. And then if we just do this and this, we should be able to set you to extract. Insert the pipe upgrade, and those are going to fill up. Fantastic. So um, doing that, Reminds me that I should actually probably do this because then I can use just one flux point to move power over. Now, it's actually possible that if we use the universal cables from mechanism, we might not have to make as many flux points. Although the pipes, the energy pipes from the pipes mod can only move a maximum of 131,000, I think it is, redstone flux per tick. Let me take a look. Yeah, 131,072 is the max there. The universal pipes from Mechanism, these ones here, can go all the way up to 3.27 million FE per tick. And they're really not too expensive. Even the basic ones here can move 3,200. The advanced variants, 51,000. And then the uh, the elites here can do 400,000, which I think for us right now is, is going to be more than enough. So if we do this, that's going to pull power from the flux plug. We can see it's connected right there. You can kind of see it's connected. But uh, these are getting power. These are ready to work. They just need uh, specific items. So if we go back here, the plutonium pellets 
require fluoride dust, and the polonium pellets also require fluoride dust. Okay, that is fine. So we do have a ton of fluoride. We've got 32,000 of the stuff. I believe this is once again a job for the crusher. It is indeed. So what we're going to do, much like we did previously with the tertium essence, is we're going to teach our system how to crush the fluoride in code, and then we're going to get two exporters with crafting cards and place those onto these PRCs over here to tell our system to craft the fluoride dust and export it to these PRCs basically continuously. So uh, let's go for two exporters and then let's also go for two crafting upgrades, start and start. So boom and boom, those are both down. And then we should just be able to connect that up kind of right there, I guess. Yeah, why not? We'll do this, we'll do this. We'll make sure that both of those are set to fluorite dust. We do have to request a fluorite dust, but now we have the crusher set to uh, maximum speed. So getting one is not going to take more than a few seconds. Let's do this and this. Let's put in our crafting card here and here. And then hopefully, so long as the front of these machines are set to input, which they are, it's going to work. Look at that. Fantastic. So this is exporting the fluorite dust and then turning it into plutonium pellets. It's also making spent nuclear waste as a byproduct. Now, unfortunately, I don't think there's much that we can do with spent nuclear waste. Yeah, there's nothing to do with it. I think we just have to put it into nuclear barrels. Those being these ones right here, these nuclear waste barrels. These just hold the nuclear waste because the, uh, the waste is still radioactive even after it's been spent. And uh, we just have to store it somewhere because if it leaks out into the world, it's going to, um, it's going to cause radiation, which is not ideal. There is an ultimate trash can that says it can void items, fluids, and energy. And I believe that gas is like legally a fluid, but I'm fairly certain this doesn't work. It's fairly cheap to make, so we can try it. So what we'll do is we'll temporarily turn the blue side off here. This is for items, by the way. So this is items, energy, fluids, and gas. So you can configure the machine for each type of, uh, of resource. We'll eject the gases out on the right. And then if I put down the uh, ultimate trash can like that, does that push this out? It doesn't. Yeah, I'm fairly certain that Although it would be nice, I don't think you can delete the um, the spent nuclear waste. I just don't think it works. And so what we're going to have to do is just get these uh, ultimate pressurized tubes and uh, and use these to move the gas, uh, move the spent nuclear waste over into radioactive barrels. So we'll just do something like this, I guess, and have a bunch of these down uh, on the platform here. I think you do have to input into the, uh, the top. That's fine. We'll do something like this. Thankfully, these are quite big. Uh, they hold, I believe, 64,000 millibuckets of nuclear waste. Uh, and, and so hopefully it's going to take a little while for these to fill up, ideally. Uh, we do, of course, also have to run that over from here as well. So we'll see about running that up around and over to the same set of nuclear waste barrels. And again, we'll make sure the gas here is set to output to the left like that. And fantastic. So now we are making the plutonium pellets and the polonium pellets. As per usual, we can get uh, 16 more speed upgrades if we have the infused alloy for it, which we don't, uh, along with 16 more energy upgrades. That's going to allow us to make the uh, PRCF a bit faster. And from there, we can start looking at making the SPS casing. So the SPS casing uh, requires a lot more polonium pellets than it does plutonium pellets. So we might want to make the polonium faster than the plutonium. But at that point, the only thing we're missing is HDPE sheets. And that is where this quest line right here comes into play. So we are going to need another. PRC, uh, and then we can use that to produce substrate using water, hydrogen, and biofuel, and then we can use that substrate with ethylene and oxygen to make HDPE pellets, which we can then use in an enrichment chamber to make HDPE sheets. So a little bit of an involved process, but not one that should be too difficult. All right, so I've made two more pressurized reaction chambers. Now, in order for this to work, for us to make HDPE sheets, we need one PRC for turning biofuel into substrate. And then we need a second PRC for turning substrate into HDPE pellets. So we have both of those. Now on top of that, we need hydrogen and water to make the substrate. And then we need oxygen and ethylene to make the HDPE. The ethylene you get as a byproduct from making the substrate. So we can just pump that around and use that to make the HDPE. That's fine. The hydrogen and oxygen we can get by running water through an electrolytic separator. This guy, super easy, two infused alloys, four iron ingots, two redstone, and an electrolytic core. The electrolytic core does require a couple of dusts, most of which we can make. The only one we can't make is iron dust, or the only one that our system, I should say, 
can't make is iron dust, but thankfully we can uh, get some iron dust very easily, at which point, boom, electrolytic core and boom, electrolytic separator. This machine chugs back power like it is nobody's business. So I believe at this point, what we can do is we can take the water from the sink and we can separate that out using the electrolytic separator. We then need the hydrogen to go one way and the oxygen to go another. So let's put down both of these PRCs either side of the electrolytic separator. Inside of here, the water's gonna go in the red slot. So we'll input the water from the back and we'll turn the rest of these off for now. Then we want the gases to go out of the left and right, which we have here, output one and output two. That's fine. So what we can do ideally is run this over to here. That should, if we set the top to input, fill up with water. Fantastic. We can then start producing hydrogen and oxygen because again, it has a little bit of power in there. Um, ideally though, we do want to get another flux point down onto this guy to make sure it has all the power that it needs. Now by default, it only uses 160 Fe per tick, but the reason why I say this machine chugs back power is because unlike the other machines from Mechanism, this machine cannot take energy upgrades. You just can't put them in. Or I should say, maybe you can put them in, but they don't do anything. Uh, let me take those out and let me uh, show you how this works. So right now it's using 160 Fe per tick. If I put one upgrade in, it's gonna go up to 320. If I put in any number of energy upgrades, I think it's gonna stay at 320. Yeah, so no matter how many energy upgrades you put in, they just don't do anything in here. I'm actually not quite sure why you can even put them in when they don't do anything, but uh, if we put in all of the speed upgrades, it's gonna go up to a staggering amount of redstone flux per tick. You'll see that in just a second here. Let's quickly configure these to accept gas from the right-hand side, like that. And we'll do the same on this one. That one's actually already accepting oxygen from the left-hand side, that is fine. We do want to click these little buttons in the bottom left and right. So you'll see right now, the problem that we've run into is that the electrolytic separator has filled up on hydrogen, but we don't have enough oxygen. So the hydrogen's full, oxygen's not. That's because there's more hydrogen in water than oxygen. The way that we get around this is this little button. If you change it from idle to dumping excess, whenever you fill up on either one of these, it will then just delete the excess of that gas to allow the other gas to continue to be made. Uh, thankfully, we've got a ton of power, so that despite the fact that this thing uses, I think, like 32,000 redstone flux per tick, that's not a problem for us. We've got millions to work with. And so now it's just a case of getting the right things in the right places here. So in order to make the substrate, we need just water and biofuel. Then we need to take the ethylene out of here and pump it around into that. That's fine. So water, we have. We can do that and that's good to go. We now need biofuel. Biofuel, we get by crushing really any kind of organic matter. And so I think the best bet for us here is going to be to get another creative hopping botany pot and start. Once that's made for us, we should then be able to start growing really anything that's organic. In fact, I don't know if cactus works. Does cactus work? It totally does. And so you know what? I don't know if we're going to need more than, than 2,000. I don't think we're going to. And so instead of making a new botany pot, I might just use the, uh, the cactus that we already have, teach our system how to make biofuel using cactus, and then drop that in over here. Just to be safe, we can always go ahead and drop down the uh, creative botany pot on top of that drawer. And uh, if we get some farmland, I don't think it matters really which farmland we use, but we'll use the highest tier we have available to us. Uh, in fact, it might need to be sand now that I think about it. It does, that's fine. That's gonna produce more cactus for us, should we need it. And then over here, all we need to do is get another exporter. I'm gonna request like 10, just so we have some lying around when we need them. And we'll drop that down on the back here and tell our system to uh, craft with a crafting card and export that uh, biofuel to the PRC. That's gonna produce the substrate and the ethylene. We want both of those going around into the PRC here. So the substrate is a gas, much like the nuclear waste, which means we need more of these ultimate pressurized tubes. They don't need to be ultimate. In fact, I think that uh, some of the lower tiers here are probably gonna do the job just fine. And so in fact, we'll take the elite ones and we'll do something like that. So we'll have the front of this set to output gas, and then we'll have the front of this set to input gas, perfect. So that should allow us to extract the gas from the PRC if we have auto eject on, which we do, and the ethylene should make its way around into here with the oxygen. 
And then the final piece of the puzzle is going to be to take the substrate that we make out of here and have that go up and around and into the other PRC. We'll make sure that doesn't connect. Once the exporter is ready, we'll drop it down like so, and we'll connect that up to our network, and we'll tell you to export biofuel. Let's first request some, start and start. Export that, using crafting card if you need to. Make sure the back here is set to input for items. It is not, but we can make that work. And there we go, that is now working. Let's grab more speed and energy upgrades. I did request some more earlier, so we can do this and this. That's gonna go nice and quick. We are out of power there. That makes a lot of sense. I think what we can do here is maybe use the uh, the cabling and try and connect the power up to the bottom. There's just so many sides that you need for these uh, these machines. You need to use all of the all of the sides available to you. Let's get rid of that and then let's grab our universal cable. And if we do something like this, there we go. Now we should be uh, should be cooking. Do we have substrate being made? We do. Let's make sure that the left side is set to output. Auto eject, we want to be set to on. That's gonna push the substrate ideally round into here, but we might have to set this to extract. Fantastic. And then over here, you're not accepting the ethylene. That could be because we need liquid ethylene. Right, okay. So the ethylene that we have is a gas. We need it in liquid form. So what we're going to have to do is get rid of this end pipe, which I hope doesn't delete any of the ethylene. It doesn't. Fantastic. And we're going to have to get a rotary condensator. This guy right here. Thankfully, not too difficult. Basic fluid tank, energy tablet, and basic chemical tank. This is going to allow us to turn our gaseous ethylene into liquid ethylene. This does also require power, of course. So uh, let's get another flux point on this guy. And let's give him the speed and energy upgrades that he deserves. We'll make sure the back is set to output. Auto eject is on. And that should work. That's my bad. This is a liquid. So we need to set the liquid output to the back. And there we go. Cool. That is working. This guy doesn't have the speed and energy upgrades, but that is fine. We've got the energy upgrades already because our electrolytic separator couldn't use them. So we just need eight more speed upgrades. And then the final piece of this whole contraption is going to be using an enrichment chamber to process all of the HDPE pellets into HDPE sheets. So we'll give him power like that. It's a little janky, but it works. We'll set the left side to input, which it is. And then in here, we need to set the right side to output and turn auto eject on. That's going to push the HDPE over. You don't need an enrichment chamber. You can craft the HDPE sheets but the crafting recipe uses eight pellets to make one sheet, whereas the enrichment chamber only uses uh, three pellets to make one sheet, so that's uh, much more efficient. All right, so I've given the enrichment chamber its speed and energy upgrades. These are now coming in pretty quick, and so the question really is how many do we need? Um, we do need to take some of these out just to actually trigger quest completion, so I'll try and get my hands on a little bit of substrate. We do need to make sure this is also set to dumping excess. There we go. Fantastic. And let's grab those HDPE sheets. Good stuff, good stuff. That should be a quest line complete. I'm surprised we didn't get the uh, the sound effect there. There it is. So, that's that taken care of. Now let's see if we can't actually start putting some of this together. So, the polonium and plutonium pellets, thankfully themselves, are not radioactive, which is good. We do need to get more nuclear waste into the system. And looking at the recipe for SPS casing, it is four times as expensive on the polonium than it is on the plutonium. So I think we need about a stack of SPS casing. That means that we're going to need about one stack of plutonium and four stacks of polonium, which should be, I think, fairly fine. Um, although I do think we are almost certainly going to need even more of this creative organic matter, which is fine because we've got a ton of, uh, of mushrooms here that we can use to make even more of this uh, of this waste. Let's get all of that sifting in here. And then let's get all of this into uh, into here. It might even be worth getting a, a hopper. Our system is going offline. I'm not quite sure why, because we definitely have enough power in here. We've got uh, 100 million backed up. The reactor isn't even on at the moment. It's still off, but we have 100 million redstone flux backed up. I'm not quite sure why this is not sending power to the uh, refined storage system. Although if we wanted to, we could come over here 
and uh, and make sure that our refined storage system is uh, is set to a higher priority. Although actually, it's receiving its power through an energy pipe. That could well be the problem. Let's swap that out for a flux point dedicated to the refined storage system, and let's make sure this has a priority of like a million. Ten thousand will do. That makes sure that the refined storage is always the first in line to get power. That's the nothing else gets power before the refined storage system gets power, which I think is exactly how we want it to be. This is working fantastically. Um, I think we could, if we wanted to, give these guys a little time in a bottle tip to make them a tiny bit faster. I do want to be careful when using my time in a bottle around radioactive products, but I think this is kind of going just fine. At a certain point, we'll look at turning off or disconnecting the isotopic centrifuge. Uh, you can just flip the switch here to uh, redstone detection normal, and at that point, I think it's going to stop yeah, producing the uh, the polonium because again we only need about a stack of this and so now we can focus solely on getting the uh, polonium not the the plutonium so the limiting factor for us right now is fluorite dust it's how fast the fluorite dust is coming in as we saw before we can make the uh, the factory versions of these machines and it turns out you can actually upgrade a machine to its factory variant without having to pick it up if you make the uh, installer uh, you do have to start at the basic and work your way up but if we make a basic installer and right click it on the machine shift right click even it's going to start uh processing three resources at a time. We can turn auto sort on. That's going to divide all the items up amongst all the slots. We could then take it one step further and make ourselves a uh, tier two, advanced tier installer. Right click that on there. And now we're going to have five slots. And then if we have enough of the uh, reinforced alloy here, which we don't, but if we did, we could have uh, taken it even further to, uh, to even more slots. I think for now, this is probably fine. We can give that a little tap to make it a tiny bit faster. And if we come back over here, we should see the... Uh, polonium coming in a bit faster and we can also of course give that a quick tap as well to make that even quicker and uh, we're very quickly approaching the uh, four stacks required to get this uh, sps supercritical phase shifter up and running all right so that is four stacks of polonium it's a very very janky setup but it works and so now let's see if we can't make some sps casing so down here this is what the multi-block looks like it requires a ton of the SPS casing around the outside, and then the inside, I think, is just reactor glass. It's either reactor glass or structural glass. It looks like it's structural glass, this one right here. This is super easy to make. It's made with uh, just regular glass and then waterproof ingots. I am going to teach our system how to make these waterproof ingots, just because it looks like we're going to need a fair few of them. I think it already knows how to make the Invar Constantin blend. It doesn't. That is fine. Let's teach it how to make that as well. Um, I think it knows how to make both Invar and Constantin. It does. Fantastic. So we'll just drop both of these in over here. Boom and boom. And then we might as well teach it how to make the structural glass as well. Incurred. We'll drop that in right about here. We'll also teach it, I guess, how to make the uh, SPS casing. Incurred. Not quite sure if we have enough um, HDPE sheets yet i think we have just about two stacks and we need uh, four so we might have to do a little bit more accelerating over here to make these things just a little faster all right so once we have over 256 hdpe sheets which we do now do can we request 60 sps casing 60 i believe is the number we need start and start that should come together almost instantly fantastic and then now we need to actually build this thing so looking at the guide Ben has given us. I think the way this works is it goes one, two, three. Then you have like a corner piece and then another three. One, two, three. I think not like that, like that. I think it looks like this on, on kind of all four walls. And then we fill in the center with structural glass. Give me like 200 structural glass and start. And then in order to make this actually work, I think over here it's kind of the same thing. So you go out like this, and then you go out one more like this, and then this one goes one, two, three, and then you get rid of these two. I think that's right. Yeah, because then we can put one here as well, get rid of this one. So it's basically the same pattern here, where you have three on each edge with one in each of the corners, and then you do that just on all of the, uh, the six sides here. So it's always, let me grab some cobblestone so I don't have to keep breaking the um, the SPS casing. 
But uh, if we do this and this, you have one here, you have one here, and then you have uh, one, two, three here. Then we have one here, and we go up by one more, and we do not that. And we do one, two, three right there. This one is not correct. Over here, you put down another one right about there. You put one down like that. And that side, I think, is good to go. So you'll see that this side here looks the same. You've got three on each of the sides with one in the middle. So we're just going to do that on all six sides. And we should have this kind of pseudo sphere cube that we can use to build the, uh, the remainder of the supercritical phase shifter. All right. I think I have completed the cube. I should get rid of the uh, cobbled deep slate now. And then we fill in the center with the structural glass. The structural glass is just going to go in like this on all six sides you'll know it's worked when you put the last block in and you get the red particle effects nice so we have here a uh, a very unusable supercritical phase shifter that's because currently we don't have an, any sps ports and we also don't have any of these uh, supercharged coils we did make more casing than we needed to because the quest did give us uh, four as a reward there but that's fine we didn't really lose too much so we do need some sps ports thankfully we can use the casing for that right there and then we need a uh, at least one supercharged coil and i think the way it works is uh, as i mentioned earlier i'm pretty sure that the uh, oh we need more atomic alloys and more reinforced alloys as well eh? uh, do we have what it takes to make the coil here no we need even more control circuits for that as well and we need lasers and we need energy tablets i see okay let me get some more alloys but i'm pretty sure the way it works is that each one of these supercharged coils can use 400 million redstone flux per tick so if you wanted to use more than 400 million redstone flux per tick then you could get more than one supercharged coil but for us I do not believe that we're going to be using more than 400 million redstone flux per tick because we're not producing anywhere near 400 million redstone flux per tick. So for us, we're just going to stick with the uh, the one coil. Okay, so I made eight more atomic alloys. Let's see, is that enough? We'll dump those into the system. Uh, can you make me three ultimate control circuits? Uh, we're just missing the regular ones. That's fine. We have those. Let's request that again. I would like three ultimate control circuits and start. Once those are done, we can make our SPS port. That's going to give us two more SPS ports as a reward. In terms of the laser, we're just missing the steel casing. There's our laser, and there's our supercharged coil. And so I think, Chad, that we are finally ready to actually begin making antimatter. So the way this here works, we're going to use one of these ports, I believe, as the, uh, the place where the laser goes. So you put the laser on the port like that and then we can close that up we then also want to have the other ports on the other side so we'll put one here and we'll put one let's say over here it's at this point that we might need to get ourselves a configurator this is kind of like a wrench but from mechanism and it's fairly cheap to make at that point we can uh, shift right click to change how these work so we can set it to output or input um, I think this might be ready to go, um, unless I am mistaken here. No, I think this is good. So let's grab a, uh, a flux point if we have any left, which we do. We've got exactly one left, which is fantastic. If I put that here and I set that to Isaac's power, that's going to start pulling energy. We'll turn off the, uh, the limit uh, into here, which is good. So then we want to set one of these sides to input and one to output. The input side, if we're going to make antimatter, needs polonium. So where are we making our polonium? Our polonium is over here. So let's turn the back of this machine off. So it's no longer going to receive the polonium. Instead, we need a bunch more pressurized tubes. We need to run the polonium over to there. In fact, what might be easier is probably just moving this oxidizer and getting potentially another i was gonna say another solar neutron activator if we're very careful here i think i can configure this to not connect there's a ton of nuclear waste in here there's 734,000 millibuckets of nuclear waste in this tube i just want to get the solar neutron activator emptied because if we can empty the solar neutron activator we can pick it up but until it's emptied that's not um not plausible let's uh, set that to input gas again there so that's hopefully going to burn through this backlog of 10,000 millibuckets of nuclear waste all right once it's emptied we should be able to pick this up without causing a radioactive catastrophe we can indeed let's get this guy down like that 
And um, I don't think it really matters, but if we wanted to, we could rotate it to face that way. Then let's get our chemical oxidizer down and let's get power going to at least this guy. We can then take our creative waste, put that in here, make sure we set the left side now to output. Wait, have I done this wrong? Do I need to set the back to output? There we go. Okay. <laughs> Things are working. So the, uh, the nuclear waste is going into the solar neutron activator. The solar neutron activator is turning that nuclear waste into polonium. That polonium is going into the supercritical phase shifter, which is slowly but surely producing antimatter again with a horrible sound. Let's go over here. Let's type in super. Uh, that's not correct. Let's type in mechanism and let's try and find the supercritical phase shifter. There it is. We'll turn that down just a smidge. So this guy is currently only using 663 redstone flux per tick. That could be because we're out of juice. We are. Oh, let's turn this on. Let's start producing millions. And you'll see this gets much more lively. Once we start giving it large amounts of power, we're up at over 10 million redstone flux per tick. And we're starting to produce antimatter. It's not crazy fast, though. Again, because now we need to take that liquid antimatter and run it through a chemical crystallizer. Chemical crystallizer. To make this, we need just some more steel casing and we need two more atomic alloys. That is not going to be a problem. We've got a reinforced obsidian dust on us. We can dump that in. And I'm fairly certain that, yes, we have a couple of reinforced alloys in the system. So, boom, there's four more atomic alloys. Let's request that this stuff be made. And boom, there's our chemical crystallizer. So, this guy is going to go on the output slot. So, here we take the configurator, set you to, whoops, don't do that, Isaac. That's not how you want it to do. Uh, you want to make sure that uh, you sh uh, in the bottom left, you'll see this is set to mode wrench. If you hold shift and then scroll, you can change it to any of the configure options. And then we can change this to output. Thankfully, I know that we lost any antimatter there. We can then put our chemical crystallizer down like so. And I don't know if this auto ejects. It totally does. Look at that. We've got uh, antimatter in here. So now I'm going to steal this flux point because it's no longer needed over here. We're going to put that down right about there. That's going to start turning the antimatter liquid into antimatter pellets. As per usual, we can request the standard array of speed and energy upgrades. So right now, this is saying not enough energy to operate. I think that's because this guy is pulling all 13 million. Um, if we set this to like priority negative one, the power might go elsewhere first. Yeah, okay. So now this is the last place to get energy, which is still fine. It's still going to get the 13 million most of the time. But it basically means that if any other machine tries to use power, that it'll be taken away from this, which is ideally what we want. So that's one <laughs> antimatter pellet. It's a bit of work, but we got there. So now comes the tricky bit. We got one as a quest reward as well, which is very nice of Ben to do for us there. So the final stretch, chat. We need the antimatter core. Let me bookmark that again. I'm going to teach our system a couple of recipes here. The antimatter core is made in the induction smelter. I'm also going to clear my inventory out massively because we've got so much junk here. I'm going to get rid of basically everything that we don't need currently. There we go. Okay. So the antimatter core encode. That requires eight antimatter energy cells tier four and six antimatter circuits tier four. The antimatter energy cells, easy enough, encode. Our system already knows how to make the resonant integral components. That's fine. This requires two antimatter cells tier three. Let's teach it that as well, encode. That requires two antimatter energy cells tier two. Teach it that, encode. And two antimatter energy cells tier one, encode. That's a lot of antimatter already. We'll put all of these into here. We're going to need a higher tier crafter chat. That is going to require more of these neural processes, which now that I think about it, probably requires the crafter that I just picked up. So I might have to place that back down and put a few of these recipes back in. Yeah, the neural recipes are in there. So let's request a few of those uh, neural processes. We'll request like 12 maybe. What we can also do while we're here is uh, we can make this machine faster because right now it's not super slow, but it only has the uh, integral component in there. If we make some flux linkage amplifiers, now that we have the lead to make this happen, and uh, we might as well teach our system how to make those lead gears, we can uh, request these and we can make the induction smelter even faster. So we'll do that. That fills up that crafter. And then let's uh, go ahead and just teach our system, I guess, how to make flux linkage amplifiers. That's also the last recipe that we can fit into our netherite crafter. Can I have three flux linkage amplifiers? 
we can take these and drop them in here. That's going to put them in those slots. This is now significantly faster, almost instant, which is fantastic. The, the thing that's slowing us down now, I think, is the, uh, the, uh, the crafter there. Again, thankfully, we're about to upgrade this crafter once we have the Noel processors, which we do now have. So once again, we'll take all of these out of here. We'll get rid of this. And we'll upgrade to gold. And then we'll upgrade to diamond. And then, I don't think we need to upgrade to netherite. You know what, we'll upgrade to netherite. Boom. Okay, let's get you back down. And let's rotate this. Let's get every single one of these back in here. So... Let's have a look. If I wanted an anti-matter core, currently, we need a stack of, of anti-matter, which we don't have. We have two anti-matter, right? Um, that might be fine. We've got three more. It's coming in, slowly but surely. Now, the circuits here, thankfully, don't require as much anti-matter. In fact, it's just the final tier here that requires antimatter. And we need six of those. And you get one at a time. So we need six more antimatter. So I think we need 70 antimatter total to make all of this happen, which might be fine. So all of this is done in the uh, chemical injection chamber. So we've got some more teaching to do here. This is going to be um, a bit of a pain. We are kind of out of, um, of space here, which is really not ideal. But uh, we need to get a chemical... Injection chamber. That does require a purification chamber. We almost have everything we need there. We just need more of these infused alloys. The purification chamber also requires an enrichment chamber. So let's get our 50th <laughs> enrichment chamber of the series. Boom. We can then hopefully request the items required. Let's dump these infused alloys for the purification chamber. We can. And then once we have the purification chamber, we can then get the chemical injection chamber. All right. I think we are going to want to get at least the basic factory upgrade for this, but quite possibly we're going to want to get an even higher tier upgrade as well. Maybe even an even higher tier. Although actually no, but advanced is probably fine. So let's put you down. Maybe here. I think this is the last machine we're going to need. So we'll do something like this. We'll put you down. Like that. And uh, we can always put an item pipe here to uh, extract out of it. We'll then get ourselves a crafter requested. Start and start. And, uh, of course, we also want to make sure this guy is upgraded with both of these installers. And, as per usual, it would be fantastic if we could get eight speed and eight energy upgrades to make this guy even faster. Now, uh, the way that a lot of these recipes here work... Uh, they just take a, a previous tier circuit, so they're going to take an ultimate circuit, and they're going to infuse it with hydrogen chloride. Now, thankfully, in this pack, the hydrogen chloride doesn't look like it's going to be too difficult for us to get, because I think that all we need to do is put an exporter down right about here. Uh, is that crafter done? It is indeed. Let's put that down on top like so and make sure that it points down at the machine. We can then use one of our cables from refined storage to connect up the uh, exporter to the crafter like that and we're just going to export salt which we have uh, 230,000 of like this that's going to put that hopefully into this bottom slot here uh, this bottom bar I should say just as soon as we set the yellow side to input from the left that's that one fantastic do we have any speed upgrades we do not give me quite a few of those once we have the uh, speed upgrades, we can get the stack upgrades as well. Uh, we'll take at least three speed upgrades, I guess, and we'll drop all of those into here. That's going to allow us to export salt as fast as we possibly can. And then now, back over here, we can, I think, teach our system some of these recipes. So this one, this one here is going to be tricky. But again, we only need to do this six times, so we can do this at the end. So let's start with this recipe, encode. Then we need the tier 2 circuit, encode. For that, we need the tier 1 circuit, encode. For that, we need the ultimate circuit, which our system knows how to make. So let's dump all of those into here, like that. And then if we're going to make the antimatter core, as we saw before, we need 6 of these, which means that we need 24 tier 3 antimatter circuits. So uh, antimatter circuits, tier 3. Can I get 24 of... Uh, not 243 of these. Can I get... Uh, 
24 of these. I can, we just need more of all of the circuits, which is fine. It is possible to automate the production of these circuits, by the way. Um, the reason we haven't is just that we would need like three or four metallurgic infusers to make that happen. And I just haven't done that. <laughs> so um, it is definitely doable. It might have been the smart idea, but uh, we're in no rush because we are only at six antimatter and we still have more to go. What is causing the problem here? Oh, the problem here is that it's nighttime and the, uh, the solar neutron activator does not work at night. So uh, let's uh, take a quick nap next to uh, Seopolis, Steve, Seeds and Feeds. There we go. That's going to get the antimatter back online for us. And then let's continue making these alloys over here until we have what it takes to make 24 of those uh, tier 3 circuits. All right. I think we have all of the basic control circuits ready to go. Let's try this again. I need 24 of you. Start and start. Okay, that's going to start going. Uh, let's go see over here how well that's doing. It's making a horrible sound. We want auto sort, of course, to be on. Uh, we do need to put down that item pipe that I mentioned earlier, and an upgrade to that pipe would be much appreciated. So let's do this. Let's do this and this. And then we did request those speed and energy upgrades. So we'll take both of those and do this and this. So hopefully that's going to go a little bit faster. We need to make sure the back of this is set to output like that, auto eject on, so I had to extract again like so. Auto eject doesn't need to be on if you're extracting manually with this. Uh, so this is working, it's just the salt takes a little while to get in there. Uh, that's the only downside. These are ultimate control circuits, so it's going to take a minute. Uh, it also appears that power could be uh, a problem for us as well. I did make another flux point and put it directly onto the uh, metallurgic infuser here just to make that a bit faster. Um, what I might do here is just connect to this up to the main line like that. And again, if we get another ultimate pipe upgrade for that as well, that should allow the uh, the other machines to run at uh, at full tilt. So if we do that over here, this guy should now not be running low on power. He's not at this point, he's just running low on salt. And there's not really much we can do about that. We can't get the salt in any faster. The input slot is full. It's just how fast the machine goes, which as it appears is not very fast, chat. It's not very fast at all. Um, over here, what's our... Uh, What's our problem? Why have we, uh, why have we stopped? Are we out of power? Power's full. We're out of polonium. Oh, of course, I need to keep pumping the creative waste in. I completely forgot about this, chat. Right, okay, so that's another thing that we need to bear in mind now, is the fact that we need a lot of, um, of creative waste, right? So, uh, let me get more of this, uh, creative organic matter, and then that's almost all gone, but we do have more organic spores, so let's get those. I'll dump them in the system just so we have them ready to go. How many of these can we make? Quite a few, actually, and uh, I imagine in the time it's taken us to do all of this, we probably do have more creative essence in our compact machine, not this creative essence, of course, the other creative essence. I imagine we have that uh, ready to go. We'll keep dumping that in there. How are we doing on antimatter, uh, you ask? We have got 12 on top of our initial two. So we're at 14 out of 17. So it makes a good point in that we might be able to use gas upgrades in here. We can. So gas upgrades, as it says here, increase the efficiency of gas using machinery. So gas upgrades, these are kind of similar to the, um, to the speed and energy upgrades in the way that they're made and installed. And let's quickly teach our system how to make those, I guess. It does require iron dust, which we're also going to have to teach. That's fine. We can use the pulverizer like that in code. Now we are going to have to pick a recipe to remove from our nether white crafter here because this is now completely full of recipes. Let's get rid of the redstone comparator. I don't foresee us needing that. We'll get rid of that and uh, let's see if we can't request eight gas upgrades. That should in theory allow us to uh, to use less of the hydrogen chloride in here, which should make it a fair bit faster. So right now it's kind of struggling. If we put all eight of these in, it's still struggling, but these bars are moving a lot faster, right? If we take those out again, like these bars are hardly moving at all. Like they're not moving. <laughs> if we uh, put these in, they're still moving very slowly, like real slow. But it is moving. I also do wonder if we have enough salt. I think 224,000 should be more than enough. But uh, it's entirely possible that we uh, that we don't. 
But uh, but yeah, I think now, chat, it's it's mostly just a waiting game, right? We've, we've got to wait for the super critical phase shifter. We could try and get more power in that we could put uh, coolant into our reactor. That would increase our power output. Um, I don't know, and I really hope that the last four quests here are not hand-in quests. I don't think they are. It says the final item. I think we only need to make one of these. A hand-in quest is one like this here, where you hand in the item. Like here, you hand in 32 B-Bucks, and it gives you the Material Stoneworks Factory. Down at the bottom, this doesn't show like a zero out of one. So I'm pretty sure these are not hand-in quests. If they are hand-in quests, it means we need to make four of them, but I'm pretty sure they're not. I'm pretty sure that as soon as we make one antimatter core, all four of these will complete instantaneously, and this final quest will be ready to uh, to take. So I think we only need to make the one. Chat is right. It says click to submit. So yeah, I think we need four antimatter cores, which means we need 280 antimatter, not 70. Which is madness. Do I get one as a quest reward? I don't. I get one V-Book <laughs> as a quest reward. Okay, it's nighttime again as well, so we are going to have uh, to sleep to allow our super critical phase shifter to, uh, to keep on going. So, in that case, if we need 280 of them, that is problematic on a few counts. One, it's going to take millennia for it to... Uh, to come to fruition and two is that we might want to automate creative waste here so uh, if we do this of course disconnect that and then do something like this what we should be able to do is set this to extract give that a, uh, a pipe upgrade make sure it's not uh, got any filters on it and then uh, that's going to keep this full up with the uh, the creative waste but then on top of that we could also do with automatically crafting the creative organic matter and exporting that over to here to allow us to keep up with the creative waste because we're going to need a fair amount of it each pollen uh, each antimatter pellet needs 50 millibuckets of antimatter uh, each millibucket of antimatter needs a thousand millibuckets of polonium so we need 50,000 millibuckets of polonium per antimatter each two millibuckets of polonium is one millibucket of nuclear waste so we need 25,000 millibuckets of nuclear waste per antimatter which is five nuclear waste right so five oh sorry creative waste because you get five thousand millibuckets of nuclear waste per one creative waste so it's five creative waste per antimatter and if we need 280 antimatter that means that we need 1400 creative waste which is 22 stacks so 22 stacks of creative waste is what we need let's go see how much creative essence we have in our compact machine we've got over 2000 which is is fantastic so we'll we'll take a bunch of that we've also got more coming in as well which is um is great we'll dump all of that in there and then uh, we can also dump a lot of the other stuff here as well can we make even more creative organic matter we can we can make loads of the stuff um again it's about one to one and so uh if we can get 22 stacks of this stuff and uh, and just kind of pre-make it which i think by the looks of it we probably can do then we can just kind of set that and um and let it do its thing Okay, so we're now out of actual creative essence. Like, we have the creative essence essence, but we don't have the actual creative essence. Uh, but we do have 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 stacks of creative organic matter. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 stacks of organic matter. And we do already have some of the antimatter. So I think we're probably pretty close to having enough of the creative organic matter here. Of course, we can dump all that into there and then we can use um i guess just a, a wooden hopper of all things because again for some reason the uh, regular hoppers don't seem to be doing their uh, their job in this pack but that's fine let's grab a uh, diamond chest let's do this and let's do this and let's do this and um, i think the reason we don't have more regular creative essence by the way is that we have i believe a problem in our compact machine in that the flux compactor is getting filled up with yeah, seeds and essence, which is not ideal. Of course, if we wanted to, we could just manually take... Uh, also, the um, I keep putting the seeds in here, but these should really just go into uh, the trash because we don't need any more of these. But um, we could take some of the other creative essence here and, uh, and just place that in like that, and that's going to make more of the normal creative essence for us. So we could squeeze out a few more of the... a few more stacks, maybe, of the creative organic matter. 
This is now done, the injecting factory, and so we should have the uh, 24 tier 3 circuits. We do. Nice. So I think, if we wanted to then, I think that's all of it, right? 24, well, no, actually, I guess not, right? 24 was based on us making one. We actually need 72 now, which means we need to request 48 more of these, uh, of these tier 3 circuits. I'm going to assume that we don't have what it takes currently to make 48 more of these circuits. We don't. Again, it's just more alloys, though. So um, I guess let's make some more alloys, chat. All right, so quite a few alloys later. Start. And we just now have to wait until uh, the next 48 of these um, antimatter circuits are made. They're getting there. Very slowly, but very surely. Uh, they're coming in. And uh, over here, we have nine more antimatter. So if my number of 280 approximately is correct, we're almost a tenth of the way there. Which is not really very close. So what I might try doing, chat, is I might try eking more power out so this is 13.42 million if i turn this off we've got a lot of diamond blocks i'm gonna try putting the diamond blocks in and see if that gives us a noticeable power boost so the offhand trick does work here uh, so you put the diamond block in your offhand and then right click on the next casing and that's filled up i think all of the gaps there with diamond blocks which is fantastic and then from there we can just go all the way up to the surface so long as we have enough diamond blocks in our system that's going to make it a lot faster for us to fill up this reactor with um with diamond blocks all right so we filled this up with diamond blocks and then we ran out of diamond blocks so i kind of used emerald blocks at the top emerald blocks might have been a better starting point because i think there might be a better coolant than diamond but uh let's see if this is any better can we get more then uh, I think it was 13.42 million. The answer is definitely yes. We're up past 14 million. There's 15 million. So it definitely is an improvement. It's not a massive improvement. The fact that this buffer fills up is uh, not surprising because it's nighttime and we need to keep sleeping to make sure that, uh, that we move on here. But uh, we have managed to squeeze an extra 3 million redstone flux per tick out of this here, which is going to make it a little faster. It's about 25% faster than it was before. And so um, we should get this stuff a little bit quicker than we did last time, but it's still going to take a real long time. And at this point, outside of just making like a hundred more reactors, a hundred more of these giant 21 by 21 by 21 reactors, I don't think there's much we can do outside of just wait for the 48 tier 3 antimatter cores to come in and wait for the remaining 200 and some antimatter pellets to come in we got 26 we need 280 we need close to 300 of them i think we kind of just have to have to wait and let this whole system do its thing okay so we are still not very close on the antimatter but i think we have all of the tier three or almost all of the uh, of the tier three antimatter circuits that we're going to need here i did make a slight mistake in that we actually have to physically hold one of each tier if we want to complete the quests here which is uh, less than ideal. So let's see if we can't get uh, a tier one version here. I have the alloys in my inventory to dump those into the system. I need to ha like physically hold a tier one uh, version of this circuit, which shouldn't take very long at all, I don't think. Yeah, no, those are nice and quick. So I'll grab that. Quest complete. And then can we get a tier two version? Start and start. That also shouldn't take too long. Let's have a look. Tier two is complete fantastic we've got the tier three that's good and so we can take some of the antimatter that we already have we've got 26 i think that's enough let me get rid of this exporter and then let's uh let's dump the salt and then now each one of these each, every four makes one and it takes one pellet to do so and we need we need four of these which means we need 24 of these tier four circuits right so if we need 24 tier four circuits that's just 24 antimatter so let's put 24 antimatter into here oh this is a combiner this is not the uh injecting factory that's my bad i thought this was the same machine it's not let me get the uh combiner i thought it was the same mechanism machine but it's not there we go there's our combiner let's get this down somewhere that has power you know what has power boom right here and then we put in our antimatter pellets and we put in our circuits and then we have managed to gain a little bit of time in our bottle so we can maybe make this a tiny bit faster but uh that should 
get us all of the antimatter circuits that we're going to need for all of the antimatter cores. It's just the antimatter energy cells that are going to take a good deal of time. It looks like, like my arithmetic was off somewhere because I managed to acquire 18 of these um, antimatter circuits. And uh, I'm fairly certain that 4 multiplied by 6 is 24. So I think I'm, I'm a few shy here. Um, if we're going to make the remaining 6 of these, that means we need another 24 of these. Okay, so the problem is that we initially made 24 of these tier 3 circuits. Then we requested 48 more. But 48 was the wrong amount because 48 plus 24 is 72, but 72 is only enough to make three of the antimatter cores. We need four of the antimatter cores, which means we're 24 tier three circuits short. Thankfully, start, we can request 24 more of those once again. Um, I do have to go back here and get the uh, salt exporting once more, but again, that shouldn't take too long. Um, and at this point, I think we're good. Like at that point, once that's done, we do need this remaining six antimatter in there. But then, now, we just need however much antimatter is required to make 32 of these tier 4 cells. So how much antimatter is that? If I need 32 of these, we need 256 antimatter. We have 14. And, uh, and so, yeah, it's time to wait. All right, so quite a while later, and we have 258 antimatter pellets. Do we have, finally what it takes to make this happen. I think the answer is yes. Let's make sure we don't mess this up. I'm going to request each one of these um, antimatter energy cells one at a time just to make sure that we get the quest completed when it ticked off. Uh, we don't want to make any mistakes here. Let's give the uh, time in a bottle a little acceleration because everything in the universe here is made in this... Um, in this induction smelter, apart from all of the stuff that isn't made in the induction smelter, like everything that's made in these uh, multi-server presses, it honestly is almost certainly going to be worth crafting at least six more of these flux linkage amplifiers to make both of these multi-server presses faster, because this is just tier one, and the tier one's required for tier two, which required for tier three, required for tier four, so we're going to have to go through all of this a couple of times over here, so uh, having all of the flux linkage amplifiers in the multi-server presses is going to make our life so much easier. Tier 1, though, is done. Let's request a Tier 2. And while we wait for that, let's get these Flux linkage amplifiers where they need to go. There is one more that we're waiting on. There it is. Fantastic. That is the Tier 2 energy cell done. Let's request a Tier 3 energy cell and start. And then after that, we can go ahead and request all at 4. No, all 32 of the uh, tier four energy cells that we need. That might take a minute, especially given how fast this machine currently is. There's our tier three, fantastic. All right, so now we need to request 32 of the tier four energy cells. And the thing that we're missing is obsidian of all things, interesting. Uh, that should be fine. In fact, if we take our tier five storage upgrade and just drop that onto the obsidian drawer. I'm hopeful that somewhat quickly we should start to see obsidian coming in. We can, of course, go through to our compact machine and give that a bit of a helping hand to make it a tiny bit faster. So we'll try half now. We'll do 16 start and start, and then we can do the other 16 once we have a bit more obsidian, because this is gonna take a while. In fact, you don't even have an integral component, which is problematic. Again, I don't think the pulverizer is used in this setup, so let's do that. And then we can actually steal integral components from these magmatic dynamos now because they're not needed. We have um, a flux point over here that's pulling power from the main network into all of these machines. And so it looks like the pulverizer might be needed, actually. Let's do that. Let's do that. And uh, yeah, now all of these are working as fast as they humanly can. Let's give it a quick bit of acceleration and hopefully we can, uh, we can get this done before the sun explodes. Okay, so this is taking an incredibly long time. We're six minutes into the, the recipe craft, and we've got thousands of signalum, lumium, and um, and enderium to go. So uh, the enderium actually is, is fine. I'm going to cancel the craft. The enderium is fine. 
The reason the Enderium is fine is because we have an Enderium seed. And so I think what we should probably do is take out the recipes for Signalum and Lumium and Enderium here. We should have a bunch of Signalum and Lumium and Enderium left. Never mind. Let me put those back in. We'll do you and you. Let's request four Signalum and four Lumium. What we'll do then is we'll make the Signalum and Lumium seeds and we'll get those going in creative botany pots. If we can get those into creative botany pots in our compact machine, we can start growing the Lumium, growing the Signalum, and hopefully that's going to be a lot faster than trying to craft them all individually, and hopefully that's going to cut down the amount of time required to uh, to craft si uh, 32 of these tier 4 uh, energy cells by a substantial amount. All right, so... We've got about 500 Signalum and, sign and Lumium from our seeds, and um, I have put quite a few Signalum and Lumium seeds down in here. Uh, you'll see we've got, uh, I think, three Signalum and two Lumium seeds over there, so we're growing quite a lot of them, but we need over 7,000 Signalum and Lumium. And so it looks like we might have to turn to a different method of production. Um, I have also requested, by the way, that our system make uh, all of the hardened glass required, so the hardened glass required for the uh, the tier 4 energy cell is currently being crafted. We need like 2,000 hardened glass, so that's on its way. While we wait for that, it looks like if we go Signalum, bookmark that, and Lumium, it might be faster to use this recipe right here where we smelt Signalum blend or Lumium blend in a furnace. Because our rainbow furnace is so fast, the Signalum blend is made with redstone, silver dust, and copper dust. The Lumium blend is made with tin dust, silver dust, and glowstone dust. So, um, tin, silver, and glowstone, I think we have lots of. We've got loads of tin, we've got loads of silver, and we've got loads of glowstone. And then, the same is true here, I'm pretty sure we've got loads of copper as well. If we encode both those recipes and drop them in here, we can take out the creative waste barrel and the structural glass for now, because I don't think we're going to need more of those either. Those are the crafting recipes. Then we can just teach the system how to smelt the Signalum ingots in here. Again, we'll do it with 64. We'll see 64 equals 64. That should be more effective with our rainbow furnace that can do 64 items uh, at a time. So we'll encode both those and we'll put them up above the rainbow furnace like that. So now, if we wanted to request, we need, I think, 7,000 more Signalum. If we wanted to request 7,000 Signalum, of course, we do need to take the recipe out of here. Let's do that. And then we need to teach our system how to make the dusts as well. So we need to teach it how to make Copper dust, which we're going to do in the crusher, encode. We need to teach it how to make silver dust, which we're also going to do in... Oh, you can't do silver dust in the crusher. Of course you can't. That'd be too easy. Uh, let's do tin dust also in the crusher. We'll encode that. And then silver... Can I really not put silver? Let me check. Can I not crush silver in the crusher? Because this is really going to put... Yeah, you can't. Thankfully, we need a lot less silver than everything else. So I guess we'll teach silver with the pulverizer. And we'll hope that this is fast enough. So I'll put silver in there. The uh, The whole idea here is that the, the, the induction smelter is just too slow. It's not very fast, um, is the problem. Um, I don't know why you are no longer exporting. The pipe might have disconnected, though, yeah, when I uh, rotated it by accident there. So we'll set that to extract again. That should keep going with its uh, with its crafts. But uh, the trouble is that the induction smelter is not very, very fast, and this is as fast as it can go, whereas the uh, crushing factory here can be sped up quite a bit, and we can, of course, also make uh, even higher tiers of installer to make this even faster, right? We can do this, and now we can do even more. And so, let's see. If I go tier... Well, actually, real quick. How are we doing on hardened glass? We've got 436 left. I'm going to cancel the remainder of that craft, and then I'm going to take all of this out here and dump it back in the system, because then I'm going to request the 32 tier 4 antimatter cells again. This time it's going to make the 7,000 Signalum and the Lumium using this new recipe, which I'm hoping is going to be faster, because it's doing all of this in here. All right. It took far, far, far too long, but we have got 24 antimatter circuits tier 4. We've got 32 antimatter circuits tier 4. If we put both of these into the induction smelter, they're going to take a little while, but they should, in theory, get us four antimatter cores. I put down more ultimate cable here because the 
Thermal expansion machines are limited in how much redstone flux per tick they can take in per side, which means that if you try and accelerate them with the time of the bottle, they can only go so fast, but if you put down power on more of the sides, you can go faster. So the best way to do this would be to insert power from all six sides and then use the time, but obviously we only had a few sides available to us. That's fine. This is doing its thing. We can accelerate that a little bit, make it even faster. Chat, we have got four antimatter cores. Let me claim all of those freaking rewards. And then here, we're going to go submit, 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 and submit. And with that, chat, we've done it. I'm waiting for the sound effect. There it is. Chapter challenge eight is complete. G, G, we got a centennial trophy as a reward, which is a dude looking inside <laughs> of a chest from Looter. I don't know if this does anything or if it's just a, just a trophy to have, but we've done it. That is Seopolis 2, the mod pack complete. As a reward, of course, we get a few more uh, B books. I don't know how many we have in total now. We've got 147 left in the system. The base is not the tidiest I've ever produced, not the most organized, not the most attractive to look at. It's a little haphazard, it's extraordinarily janky, but it got the job done. You literally do get one B-Book as a reward for finishing the final quest chat, that is indeed true. And yeah, I think chat, that is gonna pretty much wrap up Seopolis 2 for us. Thank you for watching everybody. If you enjoyed the series and you haven't done so already, uh, hit subscribe if you're watching on YouTube, hit follow if you're watching live on Twitch to get notified when new streams go live and when new videos are going to be available. I'll be back very shortly with a brand new mod pack. For now though, thank you for watching. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this stream of Seopolis 2 there.